When I used to do in-person trainings for teachers and professionals working with youth on a variety of sexual health topics, one of the first activities that I would lead would be called a sex call. Now, it's not as salacious as it sounds. Basically, what I would ask the participants at the workshop to do would be pick somebody in their contacts, give them a call, say that you're at a workshop and you'd like them to complete a sentence. And the sentence is, sex is. Sex is what? Sex is blah, blah, blah. And if you'd like to participate too, leave a comment below completing that sentence, sex is. Now, the answers would range from biological sex to reproductive organs to the more spontaneous answers of sex is fun, it's awesome, sex is orgasmic, it's the best. If you're new here, I'm Kathleen and I make YouTube videos for parents on how to talk about sex and answer sex questions that their child may have. Recently, someone had commented on a puberty video that I had made saying that I should let children have a childhood and that I should not ruin their childhood by talking about puberty with a seven-year-old. And of course, I have to firmly disagree as well as make a YouTube video about it. And I get it, I get it, random commenter. If you went through puberty and you maybe got your period at 13 years old and now you see a one-off video where someone is saying to parents talk about puberty changes as well as periods with a seven-year-old, you may think, that is crazy early due to your personal experience, but it's actually not and we'll get into that reason in just a moment. I want to quickly remind you parents, just like I used to remind the adults at the sex education trainings I used to do, sex can be fun, it can be enjoyable, and it can be pleasurable. But as parents and as adults, we tend to focus on the negatives and the consequences associated with sex when talking with our children. But parents, if we want our children to have healthy sexual relationships one day in the future, then here are the five reasons why talking with our child about sex, sexual health, and sexuality does not ruin their childhood. No parent wants their child to experience sexual abuse. And one of the best ways to prevent child sexual abuse is to talk about bodily boundaries, consent, tricky people, and that no means no and stop means stop. These are some of the tougher conversations to have with your primary and intermediate age child, but can absolutely be beneficial in helping your child to feel empowered and confident in their abilities to prevent something as awful as this. Children are curious creatures. They ask so many questions about the world around them. And if you take the time to answer their questions about sex, sexual health, and sexuality, it can help to build an authentic relationship with them. If a child knows that they can come to you with a question and you will take the time to explain it in a factual way and have an honest dialogue with them, then they will feel supported and heard and will most very likely come back to you with another question in the future. To a young child, growing up is exciting. They wanna know all about it. My five-year-old looks at teenagers hanging out at McDonald's in awe. She asks me all the time when she can do things like walk to school by herself. As adults, we may look back at puberty and think of it as this really awkward time. As parents, if we had felt anxious or fearful going through puberty, we may project those feelings and fears onto the conversations with our child. But I want to remind you that to a prepubescent child, looking at teenagers and older youth, growing up looks exciting, it looks cool, it looks fun. So when my daughter lost her first tooth, she was so excited, and not just because of the cash flow that was about to hit her pillow, but because we had explained to her that this was one of the first signs of her becoming an adult, getting her adult teeth. She responded with joy, saying, I'm almost a teenager. Well, not quite yet, my love you still have to go through puberty. And so this gave us the opportunity to talk about puberty and puberty changes and the excitement around the loss of the first tooth made talking about growing up and puberty really exciting, as it should be. In the United States, puberty can begin as early as eight years old for some children, usually starting with their period. It can be shocking and scary to see period blood for the first time, especially if you've never been told about puberty changes. By having talks prior to this happening, it gives your child the opportunity to ask questions in a neutral environment and prepares them for what's to come and what to do when it happens. If you're like the majority of parents who reach out to me, then you really want your child to delay the initiation of sex for as long as possible. 
And when I tell these folks that you can actually better your odds of that happening by having medically accurate and factual conversations about sex with your child early and often, and that the research actually shows that children tend to delay the initiation of sex when they receive comprehensive sex education. And when I tell that to parents and I say to start talking with your child in the primary and intermediate age, and therefore by the time your child gets to be a teenager in the middle and high school age, the talk won't feel overwhelming because you've been doing it little by little. They look at me and they go, well, okay, how do I do that? That's part of the reason why I started this YouTube channel. I want to help parents build their self-confidence in answering sex questions that their child may have. Parents, feel free to talk about puberty changes with your seven-year-old or when their first tooth falls out. Don't let anybody tell you that you're ruining their childhood by having talks about sex, sexual health, and sexuality from a young age because the research supports you, and so do I. I'm Kathleen, thanks so much for joining me. I'll be back next week with another video on It's Time for the Sex Talk for Parents.